Intuit's Mint is one of the most popular personal finance apps out there. Mint helps you to keep track of your budgeting, spending, your net worth, and even your credit score. This video is going to teach you everything you need to know about how to use Mint, how to get more savvy with your money, how to build your net worth, and how to get started securing your financial freedom. The first step is to secure this video's place in the YouTube algorithm by making sure to smash the like button. Also make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos come out every Friday. They'll help you live a life you love through personal finance and self-improvement. In actuality, the first step is going to be linking your different accounts to Mint. These different accounts are going to be broken down into four general categories, cash, credit cards, loans, and investments. Cash accounts will include things like your bank, PayPal, and Venmo. Credit cards will of course consist of different accounts linked to your credit balances. The loans category can track your different loans so long as they are connected to some sort of an online account. For example, I have my student loans connected to Mint through Navion. You can do the same thing for a mortgage, car payment, or a business loan. Finally, investment accounts include a broad range of options from traditional brokerage firms to alternative platforms like Robinhood or Acorns or even some crypto platforms like Coinbase. Adding an account is as simple as clicking add account and logging into it through Mint. Once you have done this, Mint is going to import your transaction history from this account and then it's automatically going to use these numbers to start building out your budget based on your typical spending patterns. You can, of course, adjust these budget categories as necessary if you would like to increase or decrease Mint's suggested amount. In fact, you can create new categories altogether. One issue that may arise from your transaction history is that Mint doesn't have the full context of all of your purchases. For instance, there's a local restaurant that I go to that sometimes gets categorized as doctor rather than as a restaurant. And then sometimes you buy things online that are a business expense, but they just get tagged as shopping. You can change these as well by simply going to the transaction, selecting category, and then changing it to whatever you would like. Now that we have all of your accounts linked and your transaction history fixed, Mint still might not have a fully accurate portrayal of your finances and your net worth. And this is because Mint can automatically attract money or assets that you have offline. In fact, there's actually some online accounts that Mint just doesn't offer support for, at least not yet. This is where the property account category comes in. Property allows you to keep track of offline accounts or those not supported by Mint. It also lets you keep track of physical assets. For example, one of my student loans is not tracked on Navion, so I just have a negative value for that loan principal in the property category. I also use Celsius, which is a crypto lending platform that's not supported by Mint. I made a property account called Celsius Balance, which I update every week to reflect my weekly interest payment. I then have to change the transaction category of putting my money into Celsius to note that it's a transfer rather than spending money. Now, finally, we have physical assets as property. This supports another one of the great features offered by Mint, tracking your net worth. Your net worth is essentially just how valuable you are, given all of your assets and everything you own, minus any liabilities like loans and other forms of debt. Adding your physical assets to Mint lets you get a better picture of your net worth. And that's because the things you own are assets which are valuable and thus contribute to your net worth. Think about things like cash on hand, expensive equipment like cameras, commodity goods such as comic books, or even your car, assuming it's paid off in full. The net worth component of Mint is so important, it's actually the first thing that you see on the homepage. You can see the changes in your net worth over the past week, month, year, or however long you've been using Mint. Mine's taken a pretty big hit lately with my grad school loans. Next to net worth, we have spending. This is a graph that shows you how much you have spent in the current month, and then it compares that to your spending in the prior month. Now, Mint is practically always going to advise you to spend less than you did before, and it's going to warn you when you're coming close to overspending in your different budget category. This is one of the issues I have with Mint that I touched on a bit before. Mint doesn't necessarily always understand the context of your purchases. Last month, you may have made a large one-time purchase like a business investment. Similarly, you're likely going to spend more money in December than you did in November because of typical holiday spending. Mint doesn't like either scenario since you're technically over budget in both instances. This is why it's important to remember that apps like Mint aren't just be all end all solutions. You need to know basic budgeting concepts and have a little bit of self-control in place in order to stick to your budget and therefore get the most value out of using Mint. One example of this is that Mint lets you create custom challenges to decrease your monthly spending. Mint is going to make suggestions for you automatically, but you can of course customize these options. Let's say you're looking at your transaction history and you're thinking, man, I spend way too much money on fast food. So you can create a challenge to say, I would like to spend less money in this category over the next week. You can also add in a custom message as to why you would like to achieve this goal. That's going to be a great way to keep you motivated and sticking to your budget. Another great feature of Mint is that it tracks your credit score. Your credit score is a measure of how trustworthy you are seen in the eyes of lenders. The higher your credit score, the more trustworthy you are seen as, and therefore the lower interest rates you can lock in when you're getting loans. Mint shows you where your credit score falls on the range and then breaks down how you're doing in the six different categories that impact your credit score. Typically, you're entitled to a free credit report from each of the three credit reporting agencies within the US. Mint reflects your score from TransUnion. However, this 
doesn't count toward your free report. And this is a great feature because it allows you to keep an eye on your credit score and without utilizing not just your TransUnion, but any of your free credit reports. My credit score has even gone up a couple of points since using Mint. However, this is most likely due to the average age of my credit increasing as time simply passes. One added feature that would be pretty nice to see in the future would be the ability to track your credit score over time. You can already do this for your net worth and your monthly spending. This way, users would have a different way to check their financial health over time that's not tied directly to their spending habits. Next up on the homepage, we've got a plus icon. This allows you to add transactions, budgets, and accounts. We've already talked about accounts, so let's look at transactions. This feature is primarily going to be for cash in and cash out transactions. Although you're also able to use it for keeping track of credit and debit card purchases from accounts that aren't linked to Mint. You can do the same thing for checks as well. You set the transaction as either income or an expense, cash in or cash out. You can select a merchant if you would like, although these are going to be limited to different merchants you've bought from in the past. You can also set a tag or write a little note to keep better track of this transaction. As someone who does a reselling side hustle through eBay, this is a great tool. It allows me to keep track of cash purchases from flea market and garage sales, and it provides backup data in case I need to double check the accuracy of my reselling purchases spreadsheet. The add budget option is where you can go to increase or decrease your income and expenses categories for that month. If you have a large one-off purchase coming up, you can create a special category for that item. That way you're staying on budget even if you're spending more than you do in a typical month. Mint automatically creates a lot of these budgeting values based on your prior spending history. It's again important to make sure that your transactions are properly categorized. That way your spending is going to be reflected in the proper part of your budget. Now while you're in the add a budget page, importantly it's also going to show you all of your unbudgeted spending in that month. This is a good way to catch uncategorized purchases and it'll help you discover areas which you might not know that you're spending money in. Next to the plus button icon we've got your settings. There's really only two important things here for your ongoing use of Mint. First you can browse all of the accounts that you have linked to Mint and check out their balances as of their last update. Second you can get access to your referral link. Speaking of if you would like to get started with Mint you can check out my link in the description below. For every three people that you get signed up to Mint you're going to earn 10 bucks. Now this is actually kind of low compared to some other apps within this industry but hey who's going to argue with free money right? Rounding out the home page we have account categories that you can expand to see the balance of some of these accounts, your recent transactions, and then a whole bunch of ads. The first set of ads are recommendations from Mint's Marketplace tab. This is an area on the app that showcases different offer from Mint's partners. These are typically complimentary personal financial services. For example, there's lower mortgage rates from Rocket Mortgage, opportunities to save on student loans, a bunch of credit cards, ways to maximize your savings, and investments to other apps. My app recommendations include Masterworks, which is used for investing in art, and then Stash, which is another personal finance and investing app. If you'd like to see me do a video on either, please let me know in the comments down below. Switching to the Marketplace tab to get a full picture of what's offered, let's start with credit cards. There's a lot to choose from, so there's also a built-in compare feature. That way you can look at the differences between the different cards offered. Although if you need a credit card, I would recommend doing this research off of Mint. You're going to be more likely to find a deal that better suits your needs or gives you better value than what's offered through Mint's partners. Personal loans will give you options for consolidating credit card and student loan debt. Now, this is a pretty hefty topic and also something that you should explore off of Mint. Home loans just lists and then redirects you to services provided by Rocket Mortgage. Investments is the fun part for me. Currently, there are nine apps and different advisor services offered, including the two that I just mentioned. Now, there's also Acorns, and you can watch a pretty good video about that linked in the description below. Plus, there's things such as Fundrise, which allows you to invest in real estate, Public, which is an investing platform that's integrated with social media, and Yield Street, which offers a bunch of different alternative investment classes. Insurance is a quote and rate finding tool. The internet, again, may provide you with better options than Mint. Savings lists a couple different options for high yield savings accounts, the highest of which is Citibank's 0.5%. You can get 0.55% elsewhere, though high yield savings accounts aren't super important except for having a good place to store cash for your emergency fund. Rounding out the marketplace, we have student loans and auto loans. Both of these present a couple of options for looking for and then locking in good interest rates for both of these kinds of debt. One of the best ways to secure a low interest loan is by having a good credit score. I'll make a video about how to boost your credit score in the future. The last main function of Mint is the monthly tab. This gives you more tools for budgeting. You can check out your monthly cash flows or quickly assess the top spending categories within your budget. You can also check out a little animation to review your last week's spending. Another neat feature here is the bills and subscription section. This will automatically detect and track these different recurring payments. So it is missing my Apple Music subscription. You can add these bills or subscriptions manually as well. Next up, you can set goals for building up savings, reducing credit card debt, and paying off student loans. These allow you to set a monthly amount that you're going to set toward achieving these goals. Last on the monthly tab, financial resources links you to different information about finances and guidance. Though most of this support
support page just redirects you to some of Mint's partners. I highly recommend getting started with Mint. It's very simple to use and it's going to instill in you some great budgeting habits. Also make sure to click the video on screen to watch another that you're going to enjoy and then please add some music, the Mint personal finance app or whatever else it is that you love to your day. Add some, add some